Emily, I'm grabbing lunch with friends today, so can you watch the kids? After sending my husband Kevin off in the morning, my sister-in-law Rebecca popped in like clockwork. Rebecca, I'm working from home today too. Oh, come on. You're just working at home, right? Let me have a break as a mom. All right, take care. With that, she left, leaving her kids behind. I sighed and welcomed the three kids into my home. My name is Emily. I am a 37-year-old working homemaker. I freelance as a graphic designer, primarily working from home. After pouring my soul into building my career, I realized I was already past my 20s. By the time I felt stable in my work, I was 35. I was happy doing what I loved and thought maybe marriage wasn't so necessary. That's when I met Kevin. Kevin is one year older than me at 38 and works for a company that designs posters and signs. We met because I took on a freelance project from his company and eventually we got married. Since I had lived alone for so long, I had some reservations about living with someone else. But life with the easygoing Kevin was comfortable. However, about six months into our peaceful married life, things changed. The trigger was my mother-in-law Margaret getting hospitalized. It wasn't a life-threatening illness, but her physical strength had declined. Worried about her, I started visiting my in-law's house whenever I had time. Emily, you're busy with work too. Don't feel like you have to visit too often. Though, I'm glad when you do. Just don't push yourself. Margaret sounded genuinely concerned. No worries. I enjoy chatting with you, Margaret. It's actually a refreshing change from working alone at home. I reassured her with a smile. Margaret is a delightful person, always cheerful and charming. Even though I'm younger than Kevin, I am not what society would consider a young daughter-in-law. I know my in-laws would probably be happier with a younger daughter-in-law, especially given that I'm married to their eldest son. So I was prepared for some pushback when I first introduced myself. However, to my surprise, my parents-in-law were incredibly welcoming. Margaret even said, My son's not the most interesting guy, you know? I had almost given up on him ever getting married. Having a strong and wonderful woman like you as my daughter-in-law is a relief. Thanks to that, I've built a strong relationship with my in-laws. So, given that Margaret was ill, I had no reservations about visiting my in-laws' house this time around. But there was one issue. It was about Rebecca, my sister-in-law. Rebecca is Kevin's younger sister by six years, married eight years ago, and has three kids. Living near the in-laws, Rebecca, a stay-at-home mom, seemed to be dropping her kids off almost daily, even after Margaret got sick. Having the grandkids around is great, and Rebecca needs a break too, but having them here this often is a bit much, especially when I'm not feeling well. Margaret mentioned one day. Rebecca dropping off her kids responded, Well, wouldn't having kids around cheer you up? Just let them play around, it's fine. Rebecca, considering Margaret's condition, maybe you should hold off on leaving the kids here for a while. What? You don't understand how tough parenting is. Uh, how about Emily helps? You're here to assist mom anyway, right? Take care of the kids too while you're at it. Bye! Rebecca walked out, ignoring my suggestion. Emily, I'm so sorry. I spoiled her too much, and this is the result. You should get back to work. Don't worry about me. No, but looking at the kids racing around inside, I debated going back home, but eventually decided to stay until Rebecca returned. It was only 10 a.m., and Rebecca should be back by 3 or 5 p.m. at the latest, giving me enough time to cook dinner before Kevin comes home. However, Rebecca didn't return until after 7 p.m. Sorry, I got a bit delayed. Oh, Emily, you're still here. You must have a lot of free time. Bye. Wait, Rebecca, how about saying thank you? Margaret chided Rebecca, who was about to leave. Oh, give me a break. I'm too old for lectures. Bye. Rebecca took the kids and left without a word of gratitude. Both Margaret and I stood there in disbelief. One day, Rebecca suddenly said, Can you take the kids shopping for clothes? They grow up so fast, they need new clothes. I have a doctor's appointment today, I can't. 
Margaret looked bewildered at Rebecca's sudden request. I don't see why you can't just reschedule your doctor's appointment. I need you to go shopping today. I'm meeting my mom friends tomorrow and I don't want the kids looking shabby. Don't you feel sorry for them? Why can't you go yourself? Why do I have to go? Even the usually gentle Margaret raised her voice. I've got my own preparations to do. If you won't go, mom, then maybe Emily can. Suddenly, Rebecca turned to me, who had been silently observing. Um, what? You're always pushing things onto Emily. Fine, you go, mom. In the end, Margaret gave in to Rebecca's stubbornness, and so Margaret rescheduled her doctor's appointment and took the kids shopping. Days went on like this until Margaret finally broke down from exhaustion. I rushed to my in-law's house when I heard the news. When I got there, Rebecca was already present. I thought she might be apologizing to Margaret, but she wasn't. When Margaret said, Rebecca, I'm really tired. I don't think I can take care of your kids for a while. Rebecca exclaimed, What? Seriously? You're just a little tired. I'm not asking you to take them anywhere, just watch them at home. She had the audacity to say that to Margaret, who lay weakly in bed. Rebecca, that's too much. What? Okay, fine. Why don't I just leave them with Emily from now on? Uh, what? Exactly. You can relax, Mom, and I won't have to change my plans. Problem solved. Rebecca sounded as if she had come up with a brilliant idea. No, I, I can't take care of them alone. Hmm, then I guess we have to rely on Mom. You pretend to care, but you won't actually do anything. Pressured by Rebecca, I reluctantly agreed to take on the task. The next day, Rebecca really did drop off the kids. What's more, she always came after Kevin had left for work, perhaps to avoid any confrontation. I couldn't discuss it with Kevin since I had already agreed to it. But taking care of three kids turned out to be more challenging than I had imagined. Not only did I have to prepare lunch, but I also had to manage their constant requests for snacks. The kids were running around, making it impossible for me to concentrate on my work. Since we live in an apartment, not like the spacious in-law's house, I was always worried about receiving complaints from the neighbors. On this day, I had invited an old friend from art school over. I was still looking after Rebecca's kids and it was hardly the right time to have someone over, but I needed to talk to someone. So I invited this friend who I've known for a decade. Looks pretty hectic, huh? My friend says as she watches the kids run around. Yeah, it does. Pouring coffee, I reply in a tired voice. What about Kevin? He doesn't know about this? Yeah, Rebecca avoids Kevin's lectures like the plague. She specifically chooses times when he's not home to drop off and pick up the kids. Besides, Kevin's been working late a lot recently. Wow, but you should talk to Kevin before it gets too much. Yeah, I should. I nod, appreciating my friend's concern. Then, as if life wasn't chaotic enough, I miss a work deadline. Worse, it's a project from Kevin's company. Emily not meeting a deadline? What's going on? I'm so sorry. Kevin did some maneuvering on his end. I am not blaming you. You look exhausted. Something must be up. Kevin speaks gently as I lower my head. I then tell him about Rebecca leaving her kids with us every day. I am worried she'll just dump the kids on us for Christmas and go out partying. <sighs> I sigh. Really? I'm sorry I didn't notice. Does Daniel know about this? Daniel is Rebecca's husband. Oh, now that you mention it, I remember something. One day, Daniel came to pick up the kids. I gently asked if he could reduce the frequency of leaving the kids with us. All I got was a disinterested, uh-huh, in response. It was surprising considering Daniel's reputation as a straight-laced government worker. Thinking back, something else had been bothering me. For lunch, I couldn't keep serving only supermarket-bought lunches and frozen meals, so I'd been making simple homemade dishes, and I noticed that the kids would devour the food every single time. There are definitely some things to be concerned about. Maybe it's time to dig a little deeper. Hearing my thoughts, Kevin said as much, and then reached out to a certain individual. Christmas comes around. I'll be counting down the new year in Paris. Take care of my kids, will you? 
I get this sudden call from Rebecca while at my in-law's house. Excuse me? Naturally, stays extend from Christmas to New Year's celebrations. It's a whole different ball game compared to watching the kids for just half a day. That's asking a bit much. Emily, you live so freely. A little inconvenience is good for you. You should thank me for this precious experience. The kids will stay with you. Bye. Sorry, but I'll be at my parents' home. Even so, she vents at me and hangs up. I sigh and make a call. A few days later, what the heck happened? Explain. A furious Rebecca calls. Oh, Rebecca, welcome back. How is Paris? Who cares about that? Why are the kids you were supposed to be watching with Child Protective Services now? They're even investigating us. After hearing my story, Kevin reached out to a friend who works in the same office as Daniel to find out what's been going on with him recently. Apparently, Daniel had been boosting that they had a bit more room in their budget and could take an overseas trip for Christmas. So basically, you're saying you cut costs by leaving the kids with Margaret and me for meals and snacks? Who cares? That doesn't mean the kids should be taken by Child Protective Services. It's not just about that. Neglecting to provide proper meals for your kids is a form of abuse, so I contacted the appropriate authorities. What are you talking about? I heard it from the kids. I asked them casually when I noticed how eagerly they were eating the lunches I made. It turns out, Rebecca and Daniel were only feeding the kids fast food and instant ramen. And instead of spending the saved money on the kids, they were using it for their own Christmas trip overseas, which is unacceptable. Daniel, you work for child services, right? Someone like you neglecting their kids. What's going to happen now? With that, I hung up the phone. Soon after, Child Protective Services conducted an investigation at Rebecca and Daniel's home. With the kids' consent, they were taken into the care of my parents-in-law. This became public and Daniel was pushed into a less desirable job position, eventually resigning. He seemed to be having trouble finding another job, his bright from being a government worker getting in the way. Rebecca also started working part-time, but it didn't last. Both of them frequently asked Kevin and his parents for financial help, but they refused. Of course, Kevin and I did everything we could to support the kids, who have now grown attached to us and rejected any contact with Rebecca and Daniel. Seeing Rebecca and Daniel's retreating figures after the kids told them through the doorbell camera that they didn't want to see them made my heart lighter. Even the kids who I once thought were out of control have become much better behaved, showered with genuine love and affection for my parents-in-law. These days, I'm enjoying the lively, happy days that I hadn't anticipated.